Hey y'all, it's been a little while since I've done one of these videos, so uh, I had a cool banjo come through the shop this week and uh, I wanted to do a little uh, before and after uh, sound clip to let y'all hear the difference in uh, a banjo that you might think is set up pretty good that's doing the job versus a banjo that's uh, really performing at its absolute uh, best and highest potential. Uh, this week we've got a, what from what I can tell is a, uh, according to the serial number, a 1995 uh, Gibson RV250 that I think has had uh, some hot rotting done to it, I'll put it that way. Uh, the uh, inlay pattern is, I think this is a, like a modified uh, Florentine uh, wreath type inlay pattern. I forget what exactly they call that, but uh, you see it on a lot of raised head banjos. But the neck appears to be an original uh, 250, you know, fiddle cut neck, but I think that at some points uh, someone has upgraded this fingerboard uh, and peg head overlay to the, the one that's on it now. The major thing that uh, is going to be undertook for this banjo is is the head change right now it has a um, five star head on it which uh, five star uh, brand heads have their followers i know a lot of people that swear by them i personally am not a huge fan they're awful thick uh, which in my opinion cuts down on vibration and uh, i'm all about clarity and getting the most tone out of your banjo you can get and the more frosting and thicker these heads are the uh, less they're vibrating when you're playing them uh, so it's going to get a, a nice remo uh, top frosted 11 inch high crown banjo head put on it which i think if i hypothesize correctly will uh, give it more volume and, and and a little better tone more i know more clarity um, these five-star heads are, their kind of claim to fame is, is you can get them really super tight without them busting. And uh, with all that frosting on there, you would need to get them really tight in order to cut through. So uh, I'll play a little on it uh, before we change it, just so you can kind of hear it. The main thing that I notice in this banjo right now is the third string, kind of tubby uh, and muddy sounding. It's kind of, uh, it's just not very clear the way it's uh, set up right now, so I'm going to take this head off and give you an update. Once I get that off there, I'll probably just put the videos together and, and go from there. So we'll see you soon. Hey friends, we're here with the RB250. Um, I <laughs> went to check the head tension on this banjo before taking the five star head off and it's at 93 on the drum dial. So, um, They've got this thing cranked down pretty good, and it's, uh, I know if I had a Remo head cranked at 93 on my banjo, it would be around uh, B or a B flat note. So uh, they've got it pretty tight, and it doesn't sound very tight with that uh, thick head, and they've got a pretty good size bridge on here too, I assume to try to kill down the overtones of it. So uh, let's begin taking this head off and uh, getting the Remo on here. Okay, first things first, let's get the strings off this thing. Uh, the tailpiece and everything moved over to the side and uh, begin to remove this head. All right, we got the uh, strings removed and the tailpiece off here. Um, next comes removing this armrest and uh, then all of the hooks and nuts. Now 
Now you'll probably notice in the uh, sped up video that I alternated two here and then went over here and did two, two here. And a lot of people do that when tightening a head, but when they loosen a head, they just start going around. Um, I find if there's a lot of tension on the head and you let too much tension off on one side, um, this one was up to 93 on the drum dial, so it was pretty tight. Uh, if I were to let all the tension off one side, there's a chance of kind of bowing out the tension hoop on this side uh, and flaring it out. So I always kind of try to relieve the pressure a little bit all the way around uh, and alternate sides. So let's get this uh, tension hoop and head off. And here comes the tension hoop and head. Usually these make a really gross sound when you peel them off if they've been on for a while. <laughs> um, I don't know how long this head's been on here. Not too extremely long. It doesn't look like it's got a lot of play there, but um, the inside of the tension hoop is pretty, pretty gross in places. So uh, we'll try to get all that off before we put him back together. Okay, we got the five star head off and we got a brand new Remo uh, top frosted 11 inch head that we're gonna put back on here. The difference in the weight on these things are pretty crazy. Uh, this thing is a lead sled com compared to this uh, Remo head. And uh, I guess a lot of it is in the, the crimping, the metal ring and stuff on the side, but it's also uh, pretty thickly frosted. And there's even some, looks like maybe overspray on the bottom of it. Um, it's interesting to hear the difference even in just the, the plastic. How Listen how dark that is compared to that's a whole lot lighter uh, head compared to this. So uh, that uh, Remo head would definitely be more responsive than the five star head. So let's we'll start getting it on here. All right, we've got our uh, nuts just kind of snug now back on and got the uh, tension hoop in place and the head kind of set where the logo will be hit under the tailpiece. Um, We've got our flange lined up to where we know it hasn't moved and the tension hoop uh, neck notch lined up with the neck. So now it's time to begin tightening this head back up to tension. We've got the uh, head tension up just a little on it. It's um, sounds like maybe an E note. Um, so it's still pretty loose, uh, pretty spongy feeling, but it's getting it's getting there. Um, the main thing at this point, before you get your bridge and everything on, is just keeping an eye on the tension hoop, making sure the head's coming on evenly, and uh, going around the head. And checking the tension, see if there's a real soft spot or, or a real tight spot in it. And uh, we'll probably get it up just a little higher and then start putting uh, bridge and strings on and uh, go from there. Okay, uh, we got the head pretty close to tension. Uh, that sounds like probably close to a G sharp um, to me. Need to check it on the drum dial. It's sitting right at about 91 on the drum dial, which is usually where I keep uh, my banjo heads with 91 on this drum dial, which uh, Edison Wallen uh, was kind enough to make for me because I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> um, I think this is pretty close, so we're gonna get the uh, head or the uh, bridge and strings on here and uh, see how the first notes sound through it. We got the strings on here now. I'm gonna clip them real quick. I just clipped the fifth string. 
Um, we'll get this thing in tune and kind of see where we're at. Uh, hopefully we won't be too far off. Okay, we got our strings on and our bridge in place and uh, pretty close. And uh, let's see how she sounds now with uh, this Remo head. first and third strings are, are clearer uh, than the, the other video. And what's surprising, it has more uh, pop on the, on the high strings, even though this head is looser than the other one was uh, in, the, in the beginning of the video. Um, and that's, in my opinion, because these heads uh, are much lighter and much thinner, uh, which gives a more responsive sound. Uh, I'll get the armrest and stuff on it and play a tune or two on it. Got the armrest on her and found everything ready to go. You all can uh, draw your own conclusions from this video. Uh, I just thought I would put it together uh, just while I was getting this banjo together this evening. And uh, I know there's always big debates on banjo parts, bridges and heads and string gauges and stuff, but um, that's the differences between a, a five-star head and a Remo. Like I said, I personally prefer a, a Remo, but um, I know a lot of people that prefer a five-star and that's okay too. Uh, uh, it's all in how you set one up and uh, what sound you've got in your head, what you want to hear. That's another thing, who you're listening to. And uh, for what I like, I like the Remo with a, uh, not too tight, but not too loose. And uh, I, I think I put in front of the camera earlier, these uh, GHS uh, Sunny Osborne gauge strings. And uh, that seems to get me pretty close to the sound I'm after when I try to play and uh, get the, the most out of the banjos I'm, I'm playing. So uh, hope this video was at least enjoyable or entertaining, uh, even though if it may not be uh, what you agree with or, uh, or the same findings you've had in setting banjos up. Uh, I hope it at least was fun to watch. So uh, I'll sign off with that. Thank y'all.